I was made aware that there's a project and there are some people that are maybe able to help me by making a, a walker, which you see here. And it's, uh, uh, and well, it turned out perfectly. Hi, I'm Nina Carter here at the University of Detroit Mercy's Engineering Building. Today, UDM engineering students, along with their teammates from Baylor University in Texas, will present their capstone design projects. Working through the VA hospital in Detroit, each team was paired with a disabled veteran. The task was to develop an assistive device to improve that veteran's daily life. I was asked by my professor if I was interested in working in on these types of projects, like a biomedical type of product, and um, so and I said yes. And we got to come to Detroit, and they had um, different people. They had three separate um, clients that had three separate problems. We're talking to Wes, a UDM engineering senior, and Dennis, his client, who he designed this innovative pressure relief smart reminder wheelchair seat for. It helps prevent me to get um, bed sores by me being a paraplegic. I'm a T4, my, that's my paralysis. So Dennis um, has to do these pressure relief exercises where he lifts himself up out of the chair for um, 30 seconds every 15 minutes. Uh, we had this reminder system that, that we ended up going with and we also had a the cushion that would shift and change surfaces so the pressure would always be focused in a different location. This is the fifth year of the program. Five years ago, where did this original idea come from? Yeah. It came from it, Dr. Clank. <laughs> Well, uh, my colleague Nassif Reyes had been working with uh, disabled clients and uh, we thought it was a great idea uh, to continue on with that program. Um, and then I also met Molly at, uh, we have a, a junior senior faculty mentoring program where we, they meet and mix us together and uh, I said I have a need for uh, nursing help. and. Dr. Molly was there. The nurses come work with me as an independent study, so it's not a required course, but as the course has been developing, more and more nursing students are asking to participate because it's such a fun project for them to do. Uh, I really enjoyed working with the nursing students. They were great to have and be able to use their expertise and their schooling that they've been going through to collaborate with us to make sure we were taking in the medical aspects and key safety factors that they saw. Our project was kind of broken up into two semesters. The first portion was coming up with our idea, meeting our customer, understanding our customer's needs, um, developing how we wanted to solve the problem, and then really implementing um, what our final design was going to be before we actually started building, which was our second semester. The students on these teams I know were very interested in having a real live client that they were helping and um, having the students come visit in the fall and then be able to share their experiences and share about them actually meeting the client in person and talking to about them about their needs really inspired the other students to want to be on that team. Our client is a quadriplegic and can't get up and use the bathroom by himself at night so we wanted to build a bed where he could use the bathroom in it without having a mess on him or needing a caregiver in the middle of the night. And so this is what this product um, is going to be able to pro provide for them. So the bed portion is um, controlled with this lower track, which is able to recline and incline him, um, which is also serving the needs of his in-home care nurse by helping him be able to get in and out of bed easier, um, and then being able to clean him up more easily with a bedpan system that instead of having to change his sheets and clean him up. It's a much simpler process for both the patient and for um, the in-home care nurse. Um, decreases the chances of injury to both parties at the same time. The bedpan portion, it's just controlled with a sw uh, two switches. Um, you have the cushion position, which is what it's in now. Um, you know, he can pull, f put full weight on this um, to, hold, to seal the hole. And then if he needs to go to the bathroom, just switches to the bedpan. So what happens is the cushion drops down, um, down underneath. The cushion slides over, and then the bedpan comes up. How did it affect you emotionally to see someone's life so different from your everyday normal routine? Um, he didn't really let you get, you know, on a low note at all the entire time there. I mean, 
I can cook myself food. I, you know, I may live, you know, the 12th floor, but don't worry about me. I'm fine. So I think in designing the bed, though, we took a lot of emotion into it because we, we really wanted to design it so he was comfortable uh, with our mattress or with the sitting position. I think the engineers learned from the nurses um, the importance of the human machine interface type thing, um, how important it is to design for the client and make sure you obviously don't injure the client but also make them comfortable, healthy and happy. And I think the nurses get to see a little bit about uh, the mechanisms going inside the engineer's head and that uh, they don't need to put up with uh, some of the things that they put up with in the health professions. Devices can be designed to make the patient, the caregiver and the nurse's life better. That's what we're here for. The collaboration is so much fun, like Daryl was saying, when you have the engineers who are designed or they're trained to do the design process and nurses are trained to take care of people. You put those two things together, it's a gold mine. It, it, both sets of students love it. They, they just come out so excited with what they've learned and the products that they've made. It's fun for the faculty too, it, I think. We have a lot of fun. We do have a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. At first it began with a lot of research, just kind of seeing what is out there, what walkers they already have, what back braces they already have, and because um, we wanted to make something that maybe wasn't out there already or something like that and make it custom to him. Back in the fall we probably met um, once a month, but then this past semester we visited each other a lot more frequently, probably about every other week, um, bringing him updates and always getting him feedback because in the end he's Dennis is the most important person in this project, making sure that he's happy with the product that comes out in the end. And I am happy too. <laughs> what were some of the roadblocks and challenges that you guys encountered throughout doing the whole project? Well, first off, we had two completely different designs. I guess all one main design, but you know, half of was working on it in UDM and half was working on it at Baylor. And so just making sure that we communicated back and forth, you know, we did this, this is the measurements we've taken, you know, y'all need to do this. For us it was a lot of uh, communicating via text call. Uh, we did a lot of go to meetings where you kind of video conference call. So we did those usually weekly or bi-weekly. So where did the UDM Baylor collaboration stem from? This collaboration is a result of an entrepreneurship grant that we share with a private foundation with UDM as well as two other universities. And one of our goals in this is to promote students working on teams with other universities because that really reflects what actual engineers do today of working on teams with people they will literally never meet. I think it's really helpful to learn how to how to discuss problems and how to figure out solutions um, while separated for, by you know several hours of plane flights. Um, this whole project was all about inventing something, creating something from scratch, something you know that isn't in the industry, something that we could you know, something we could patent or something like that. We have a number of faculty dedicated to innovation and entrepreneurship, and in, they're actually part of a national network sponsored by the Kern Family Foundation Entrepreneurial Network, which tries to bring entrepreneurial activity into the engineering curriculum. What's remarkable here is we have faculty that are willing to not only do it in engineering, but extend it to the sciences. This college has a unique opportunity because it's engineering and science together. So there's incredible opportunities for our students to go out there and wherever they end up, either they're, if they are entrepreneurs, obviously it's obvious the benefit, but when they go to work for companies, most companies need entrepreneurial spirit in the company. And that's called intrapreneurship. That's a word you may not have heard of it before, but uh, it's really important for our students to be imbibed with the spirit. Many times the clients are companies, you know, they'll have something in their manufacturing line that they want to improve or some product that they want to improve on, so it's sort of impersonal. But in this case, it's very personal where the, the client is a real person and the needs are, you know, very personal. And so uh, the students got really excited about that. And I'm, I'm very excited to see them here and to meet, uh, to see the clients meet their product, you know, what the students have worked on all semester, and particularly this gentleman over here, it's really exciting to see him light up. Now what are your specific needs that the other walkers don't exactly help you with or may inhibit you in a way? Well, it ends up being the nature of the break in my back. It affects the lumbars, so a lot was just taken out, and a lot was, well, 
fuse back together and so on. And so what that did, it just left me in a position to where I can stand up, kind of like just stand up, go straight, but it, I would go down. You know, it's like I had a, a spring pulling me down or something like that. But I would, and then my knees would also bend, you know, so I'd put my hands on my knees to stable myself just to walk uh, in whatever room. Or, and without that, I had a, well, a regular walker. And, uh, well, this one, I can't begin to tell you how nice this one is. What do you guys think is the biggest benefit from doing this project as students? Yeah, I think for me, one of the biggest is that you get to see the way that it actually works, the way that the design, the way that testing and manufacturing actually works, as opposed to most classes where you learn a lot in theory, but you don't actually get to see the practical of what happens when um, parts break or when the formulas don't quite work out. Um, so that's what I love about the different design classes that we've got to do is that we get to actually see a project from start to completion and be able to see what that looks like every step of the way. What about working on a personal level with Brad and working specific to his needs? You know, what did that bring and what did that teach you guys? Well, personally for me, it was something that was having that direct feedback from a customer is something that we don't get in any other class. So we were able to make sure that we were meeting the needs that were really out there and we weren't just speculating as you would um, in other classes. So personally to me, it was very gratifying to be able to directly help somebody with this project and meet needs that we knew were out there but weren't met by the current market. I can't believe, begin to uh, say how, how good this is, how well it turned out for me. So the people have really done something that, uh, that is well, it's good, it'll help me, and it's not like just for 30 days or a bandage type thing. This will put up with the requirements I need. Maybe, well, this is my kind of thinking, my hopes at this point, is seeing how I am able to say stand up straighter and things. I just may be able to strengthen a few muscles that uh, kind of went on me. So the overall hope for me is maybe I can walk again. How does that make you feel? Oh my gosh, I can't, like, that was so exciting when I heard that. I, it's like, I really can't put it into words, like, like I said, as a student, how that feels. Um, it's just really, like, it's just great. I'm really glad that we can do that for him. What do you see for the future of this program? commercialization of the products rather than a single individual item that's going to help one person uh, products that can go into the marketplace and help a lot of people in fact uh, we're very happy we're just talking about uh, two of our student teams are going into a venture capital uh, development program where they're going to try and develop a business around the product they designed in this course so and the team includes engineers and nurses on yeah. The team. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were speaking earlier about that innovative spoon. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> um, yeah, um, the spoon was designed uh, based on a client that uh, Molly found, and maybe you can tell them a little bit about it. But uh, the end project was uh, you know, a spoon that will help him eat soup, and uh, the engineers have now refined that a couple of uh, iterations from the from original prototype, and uh, that product, uh, we think, is uh, going to lead to a real viable marketplace. So we hope to start we hope the team, the student team, starts selling some spoons this fall. This it was a spoon that was designed for a client who had been severely burned. He's a native Detroit man. He he um, got burned and his fingers were burned off. And he also has really bad contractures, which burn patients tend to get. And he wanted to go out in public and be able to eat because he he can't move his hands and he he only has a little tiny baby thumb. So we designed the spoon for him. Um, However, it has wide applicability for, for Parkinson's patients who move all the time, for toddlers. And so this spoon is, has the ability for anybody who has difficulty eating any liquid to be able to do that in public, which is really exciting. So that's, that's kind of where we're at with that spoon project. So, and we're hoping... What, yeah. One of my favorite stories in that project is uh, Dr. Molly brought the client in for the first time and our engineers ran over and started yeah. looking at his wheelchair, uh, what kinds yeah. of things are on it, and um, yeah. 
And that's the really, that's another fun thing about having the engineers and nurses work together is when we introduce them to clients, sometimes our clients um, physically look different than, than an able-bodied person. Nurses are masters at this. It's not a big deal for them at all. It's what we deal with all the time. And the engineers tend to have been working in, you metals know, and steels. metals and steel. <laughs> and plastics, yeah. yeah. So that's another really cool collaborative piece yeah. where it's okay to talk to somebody that, that may have some physical disabilities or things, you know, look a little bit different. And we can talk to them, find out what their what their needs are, and help them with those needs. And I think our, our engineers are learning from the nurses how to talk to clients and, and uh, customers, find out what they need and want, and and really assess that need. And we're and that's a skill that's routinely taught in nursing, and right. not so often in engineering. And our engineers learn that from the nurses, so it's fantastic. Yeah. Every time every time we come over and meet with Dennis, we bring buddies. Uh, you know, we were always there there on business you know to get 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 work done but um but after you know, we get through with our business we had a little piece of it. yeah you know we become you know, we become pretty good friends right. at, through this whole thing so you know we we'd have to hang out every day too and so just to see that you know these four years of engineering actually come you know to a huge project and actually see you know you take the theory base and you take your homework problems and you know you take your lecture time and put it into an actual product that someone's going to use it's just you know a great feeling at the end of the day when everything works so nicely. I know that the engineering, uh, I guess, myth about it is kind of very s strict or professional all the time, but um, really engineering is about trying to solve problems and most of those problems involve people in their everyday lives. And I think the fact that both of our universities have a, a strong Christian foundation really helps kind of motivate us and drive us to serve our client. And so um, it's really all about service for us and not so much getting a good grade on this project and being able to design something. It's really about helping somebody else besides ourselves.